Someday the city will blow up this devil's inferno we call the waterfront. I hope you live long enough to swallow the flames. Have Gun, Will Travel. Starring Mr. John Daner as Paladin. San Francisco, 1875, the Carlton Hotel, headquarters of a man called Paladin. May I warm your coffee, my dear? Yes, thank you. I just love having dinner in your suite, Mr. Paladin. <laughs> I'm glad you do, Linda. Such a cozy arrangement by the fire. I just adore a fireplace. Do all the rooms in the Carlton have a fireplace? Well, uh, Mr. Paladin! Oh, Mr. Paladin! Who's that? Mr. Paladin! Uh, hey, boy, I thought he had the night off. Excuse me. <laughs> Excited, isn't he? All right, hey, boy. I'm coming. Oh, hey, Mr. Paladin, so happy you're here. Afraid you'll be out for evening. What's the trouble, hey, boy? Uh, pleased to talk to you alone? Oh, sure. I'll be out in the hall, Linda. So, what's all the excitement? Oh, Miss Wong, missing. You what? I cannot find Miss Wong. Miss Wong is missing? Yes, yes. Would you please to help Mr. Paladin? Now, just a minute, hey boy. Start from the beginning. Well, Miss Wong, uh, hey boy, have big plans for evening. Plans to meet her at 7 o'clock at home of Honorable Aunt. She's not there. Honorable Aunt says she does not come home from work. We wait. Nine o'clock come, Missy Wong, not there still. Well, she was here this afternoon. I saw her down the lobby. Well, he saw her. He, hey, boy, see her, too, when she leave Carlton at five o'clock. Well, did she say she was going home? No, suffer. She delivers package for lady. Then she go home. Oh. Uh, did she say where she was going to deliver the package? No, no, she not say. But, but uh, Miss Wong, very happy to deliver package. She get big tip, two dollar. Uh, she not tell her boy destination of package. Who gave her the package, hey boy? Was it someone registered here at the hotel? Oh, no, no one I ever see before. A strange woman. What do you mean, strange woman? All the dress in black. Long black dress. Black overhead, like a bonnet. Hey boy, did she have a red kerchief around her neck? Oh, yes, sir. That's the one. You see her too? No. No, I didn't see her, but... There's only one strange woman in San Francisco who fits that description. Mammy Kane. Mammy Kane? Hey, boy. Pretty young Chinese girls who deliver packages for Mammy Kane can get into a lot of trouble. Oh, Miss Wong in a lot of trouble? If it was Mammy Kane, I'm afraid so. Oh, oh. Um, uh, Miss Paladin can help? I'll try. <laughs> It's new. It's revolutionary. It's at your Columbia phonograph dealer. Columbia, first with the LP record, first with guaranteed stereo fidelity records, is first again. Stereo One by Columbia, number one in the wonderful world of sound. A new listening experience in stereophonic high-fidelity sound that makes all your records, stereo or regular, sound better. Just wait till you see the great selection of Columbia Stereo One models at your Columbia dealer. Just wait till you hear the great new sound of pleasure, Stereo One. There's a Columbia Stereo One phonograph for every room, for every budget, for every listening need. Columbia portables are priced as low as $24.95. Consoles with many exclusive new Columbia features start at the amazing low price of $129.95. And you can buy on easy terms at your Columbia phonograph dealer. See them all and hear them all today. Mammy Kane, mystery woman, who in the few short years since the Civil War had gained enormous power through the boarding houses on the waterfront. She knew the private indiscretions of the boarding house masters, and her fortune was made by supplying them with servant girls, usually Chinese. The mystery woman had bought an old mansion on Bush Street. The gaunt eucalyptus trees moaned against the sea breeze from the bay as I walked up the steps to the massive front door. 
A few moments later, I was facing Mammy Kane, dressed in the same black dress she always wore. And even in her own parlor, the matching bonnet was tied around her chin. Would you have a glass of sherry, Paladin? No, thanks. I don't have time. So the great Mr. Paladin has come to visit Mammy Kane, and he doesn't have time for a glass of sherry. What brings the mountain to Mohammed? A Chinese girl, a Miss Wong, who works at the Carlton. Mm. What makes you think I know something about a Chinese girl who works at your hotel? The $25 you got for delivering her to one of your clients? Was the package addressed to East Street or Fin Alley, or has your business spread to the Barbary Coast? Mm. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, I'm Paladin, remember? Now, don't you pretend with me. You sure you won't join me in a glass of sherry? I'd say you average four girls a day. That's six or seven hundred dollars a week. It's pretty fair wages for a beggar who came to San Francisco nine years ago with nothing more than a dress on her back. I didn't think it was your nature to insult ladies. Would a hundred dollar gold piece insult you? What for? To tell me where you sent Miss Wong. She must be very important to you to be worth that much. Did I get a prize this afternoon? A hundred dollars, Mammy. I don't want your money. Your insults. Or the trouble you could cause me. Get out of my house, Paladin. What does it take, Mammy? Force? Don't threaten me. No, no, don't threaten the matriarch. Queen of the waterfront scum. Peddler of flesh. Shut up! Oh. It will take force. Keep away from me. Should I kill you? No. Paladin, no! Tell me, where's Miss Wan? Please! I'd be ruined if I tell you. Would you rather be ruined or dead? All right, all right! Please don't tell them I told you. Where is she? Kelly House in Finn Alley. What will they do with her? Either keep her there as a servant or sell her as a slave. Sometimes they ship them down the coast. Where would she be now, Mammy? Probably still locked in a room upstairs in the sailors' quarters. All right. Now, if she isn't there, I'm coming back and put a leash on you, Mammy Kane. And if you have to sniff through every water hole from here to Cape Horn, you'll lead me to Miss Wong. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should because... There's filter blend up front, up front ahead of the filter... And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from Filter Blend. Filter Blend means fine tobacco, Filter Blend up front. And the flavor you get in a Winston cigarette comes from Filter Blend. Filter Blend is a mighty good reason for you to smoke Winston. Because it means tobacco's specially processed for filter smoking. A Winston secret. You get Winston's own pure white modern filter, plus the rich, delightful flavor of fine tobacco. There's filter blend up front, up front ahead of the filter, and the fun you get in a Winston cigarette comes from filter blend. And makes Winston taste good like a cigarette should. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. waterfront was the realm of the devil, savored with pitch and tar. Fin Alley was lined with two-story boarding houses. On the top floor, sleeping quarters. On the bottom floor, the dining rooms and the saloons. The saloon keeper was the boarding house master. He offered the arriving sailors rooms, meals, and lager beer. And when they owed him enough money, he sold them to anxious ship captains for a profitable sum. He was a crimp who spent his spare time shanghaiing and dealing in the business of servant girls. The dim street lights along Fin Alley cast long shadows on the cobblestones, drenched by the eerie fog. Depraved men from all over the world littered the street. I walked past the German house, Three Fingered Jack's, the Bucket of Blood, Chicken Jim's Palace, and finally, the Kelly House. Sonny and breast the bar. Beer is on the house. No, thanks. No beer. The Kelly House offers the finest lager on the alley. Ain't that so, Bucko Mate? Oh, 
Kelly. Say, I want to talk to the boarding house master. Oh, it's me, the owner, standing right in front of you. Michael Kelly, master of the Kelly house. I want to discuss some important business with you, Mr. Kelly. Alone. We're alone, Sonny. Why, there ain't a sober mate among us. What's your important business? I came to buy a Chinese servant girl. Aha! A gentleman has come in me midst to buy a servant. Oh, Kelly! And what makes you think old Kelly sells Chinese servant girls? I've got the money. You name the price. You have credentials, identification? No credentials, just money. You think I run an illegal business of selling girls, eh? Well, Mr. Kelly, is this enough gold to open the door to your illegal business? Hmm. Ah, perhaps Kelly should talk with the gentleman. I want a special Chinese girl, the one who came in this afternoon around 5.30 with a package from Mammy Kane. Ah. Follow me, lad, to Kelly's back room. Take the door over there and turn to the right. Me office is at the end of the hall. I'll meet you there. Right. Oh, Gertie, you take over the bar. Keep tab on all the drinks. Drink cards, you me, boy. Oh, Kelly. Such a pretty belaying pin. Now, which pocket did you keep the gold in, me bucko? I don't know how long I was out, but when I woke up, I was lying in the bottom of a skiff. I was alone, except for a pudgy, bearded sailor who was rowing us through the dense fog. My hands were tied behind my back, and my feet were roped together. The rocking movement of the small boat didn't help the dull, throbbing pain in my head. So, after considerable effort, I managed to raise up into a sitting position. Oh. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah, so you decided to wake up, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it... Ooh. Hey, where are we going? To that old deep water packet out there. Oh, there. Then what happens? What happens? The captain has a new sailor. A new sailor. You work for Kelly? I work for whoever pays me. How many... How many new sailors have you delivered to the captain tonight? You'll have plenty of mates on board. Don't worry about that. Where's it going? What? The ship. Where's it going? Uh, who knows? It's a packet that carries coal. Who knows? Maybe you go to Puget Sound. That's a lovely trip to Puget Sound. Yeah. Yeah, I bet it is. What's your name? Paladin. Uh, Paladin? Did you did you ever work on ships before? No, not that I remember. <laughs> you would remember. Yeah, yeah, I guess I would. Hey, why have you got my hands and my feet tied up like this? Kelly ties you up. I untie you when we get to the ship. Yeah. Ropes. Burning my wrists. What did you say? My wrists. Ropes burning them. Uh, Couldn't you just loosen it up a bit? Uh, uh, no. Oh, what difference does it make? Just loosen it up a little, huh? No, no, no. I, I untie you when we get to the ship. Uh, burned wrists wouldn't be too good for shoveling coal, would they? Uh, maybe not. Okay. I'm not asking you to untie me. Just loosen the rope, will you? Uh, Come on, please. Nah. <laughs> well, maybe so. I think you're a good fellow. 
and <laughs> you've got lots of troubles to come. Yeah, I, I'll loosen it for you, Paladin. Oh, thanks. Uh, can, can you turn around? Well, I... No. <laughs> not with my feet tied up, there's not enough room. Couldn't you just sort of reach around? Reach around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. Yeah, good. There. Yeah, so. Uh, that Kelly ties good knots. Yeah, he sure does. Yeah. Usually I have to cut the ropes, but yeah, this one does not seem to be too difficult. Could you move your arm? Here. Yeah, so. Is that better? Yeah, yeah. That's better. It's coming. I'm sorry, old mate. <coughs> Thanks for untying my hands. Constipation is something people don't talk about much, but it can be a problem for anyone, even doctors. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from had this to say. A laxative should be effective, gentle, as close to natural acting as possible, and a medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, Exlax has been popular with many doctors and millions of people over the years because pleasant-tasting chocolate at Exlax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. Exlax is gentle. Next morning, it gives you the closest thing to natural action. And that's why many doctors and millions of people use Exlax with complete confidence. Exlax, the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity gently, overnight. Is Exlax in your medicine cabinet? <laughs> I took the sailor's knife and cut the rope away from my ankles and rowed back to shore. He was still unconscious when I tied the skiff to the wharf, but he was breathing, and I knew he'd be all right. It was a short walk back to Finn Alley. It must have been after midnight, but the Kelly house was still rolling with the same black-hearted drunks. Oh, come on in, Sonny, and breast it. Oh, hey, you... Surprise, Mr. Kelly. Uh, you, 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 you come back, eh, Paladin? Oh, so you found my credentials in my wallet and remembered my name, huh? Well, I'm flattered, Mr. Uh, Kelly. Now, Paladin, I, I had to do what I did when I found out who you were. I, I was afraid you'd come back and kill me. No, I'm back. I, I'll make everything right with you, and, and, and then you go. Huh? I'll go when you bring the Chinese girl to me. Forget the Chinese girl. It did mean nothing but trouble for you. Where is she, Kelly? I don't know. Take me advice, my friend, and forget her. Stop dodging, Kelly. Maybe I should beat it out of you. I owe you a few blows for the one you gave me. Will you keep away? Oh, you put that bottle down and come out from behind the bar. Get out of here! <laughs> hey, your aim was better in the dark. Over that bar, Kelly! <laughs> oh, you want to fight, Kelly, huh? Why, <laughs> you... Kelly, the Chinese girl, where is she? Listen, Kelly, where is she? Uh, upstairs, in the last room on the left. The key is in my office. Get her and get out of here. And stay away from my place, Paladin. I'll stay away unless you come poking around my part of town. Someday San Francisco will blow up your waterfront, Kelly. I hope you and Mammy Kane live long enough to see the flames. Miss Wong was crouched in the corner of the locked room like a frightened animal. When she realized I was the one who entered the room, tears filled her eyes and ran down her cheeks. It was a quiet trip back to the home of her honorable aunt. Everyone was overjoyed, including, of course, Hayboy. She did not come to work at the Carlton the next day. The following morning, I was just leaving my hotel room when there was a knock at the door. 
Oh, well, good morning, Miss Wong. Well, uh, good morning, Mr. Paladin. Did you have a restful day off uh, yesterday? Oh, uh, yes, sir. Good. Honorable aunt, so very kind. She served me breakfast in bed, dinner in bed, <laughs> and supper in bed. And how do you feel today? Oh, he's uh, happy to be back to work after so much food and so much rest. Oh, well, oh, I uh, I hope your appetite returns by this yeah, evening. Yes, sir. Oh, how so? I've made some special arrangements for you and Hey Boy. Hey Boy. I'll be leaving town on a business trip late this afternoon, but you and Hey Boy are invited to be my guests for a private dinner here in my room. Oh, with a fireplace? Yes, with fire and everything. Does Hey Boy know this? No, not yet. No, well, maybe you wait. We surprise him. (laughs) Wonderful. Wonderful. Now, the chef has promised to fix you a very special dinner. Oh, I wonder what he will prepare for us. Oh. Oh. Filet de bœuf, sauce bernaise. Cutlet d'agneau, sauce soubise. Escalope de veau à la guenoise. Pomme de terre, maître d'hôtel. Mr. Paladin? Eh, yes? If you know what the chef will prepare, uh, do not tell me. Then Mr. Wong has a surprise. (laughs) (laughs) All right. I won't tell you. It'll be a surprise. Improved K-Sight Tune-Up, the tune-up in a can. Morning, sir. Help you? I hope so. Engine, huh? Hasn't got the pickup of a kitty car. Well, it's misfiring some. Some? Mr. Half my plugs are on strike. Improved K-Sight Tune-Up, the tune-up in a can. Eh, probably your rings are sticking, maybe your valves. Uh, When was that carburetor cleaned? (laughs) Not too recently. Improved case side tune-up, the tune-up in a can. <laughs> Your car's not in such bad shape, all you need's a tune-up. A tune-up? A $50 tune-up? Now relax, we'll add a can of case side tune-up to your gasoline, another can to your oil. That'll clean your whole firing zone. Valves, rings, plugs, carburetor, everything. Mister, you're pouring it on. No, no, you pour it in. Dollar and a quarter a can at most any service station. Results guaranteed or double your money back. Improved K-Side Tune-Up, the tune-up in a can. Have Gun, Will Travel. Created by Herb Meadow and Sam Rolfe, is produced and directed in Hollywood by Frank Paris and stars John Daner as Paladin with Ben Wright as Hayboy. Tonight's story was specially written for Have Gun, Will Travel by Mr. Paris. Featured in the cast were Virginia Gregg, Joseph Kearns, Waldo Epperson, and Patty Gallagher. This is Hugh Douglas inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents Have Gun, Will Travel. <laughs> <laughs>